Hi, welcome to the second video of consensus protocol. In this consensus protocol video, we are going to talk about the other use of consensus protocol. So in the previous video, we talked about prevent attacks, how consensus protocol help us in preventing attacks from the hackers. Now we are going to talk about competing chain problem. Let us understand this with the help of an example. So this is our blockchain network, right? And let us say A as well as C created a block at the same time. This type of thing can happen. A can pick a transaction. Okay. Uh, so to pick up a transaction, there is a place called mempool, which we are going to talk about in our upcoming videos. But for now, mempool is an area from where A has picked a transaction. C has also picked a transactions from the from this mempool, and they started solving a mathematical problem. And now they have solved this mathematical problem at the same time. This type of thing can happen because all these people are at different part of the world and they are competing with each other, right? So it may happen that A has solved a mathematical problem at the same time when C has solved the mathematical problem. So now A is having a different block and C is also having a different block, right? Now, what will happen after this? After this, A will and C will transfer this information to its nearest nodes right we can we, we say these system are nodes in blockchain terminology we call these systems as nodes or you can say system also but we call them as nodes in a blockchain network so c will transfer this information to b that okay i have created a block a will transfer this information to f and e that okay i have created this orange block okay now uh, like why i am assuming that c is transferring this information to b and not to e and f we are assuming here we are assuming here that uh, for c b is the close B is the closest node and for A, F and E are the closest node. Okay. So that's why A is able to transfer this information first to F and E and C is able to transfer this information first to B since C is close to B. Okay. So this is a assumption we are taking here. Now, once this transfer of information will be done, then what will happen? F and E will create a block at their own end, means they will verify and validate this block and they will see that okay, this block is good. So they will add this block to their blockchain. In the same way, B will also verify and validate the block of C and it will say, okay, it is good. So he will also add uh, this block to its blockchain. Okay. So this is how our blockchain network will look like. Now the problem will arise is when B and C will transfer this information that they have a block, purple color block and a e and f should add this block to their blockchain and a e f will also do the same they will also this transfer this information that they have created a block they have added this block orange block and they will want that b and c should add this block to their blockchain so information will it will look something like this where b is transferring this information to a and C is transferring this information to E and F, where E and F are transferring the same information to C, B, and all. this is how the transfer of information will take place. And this is not good because now there is a conflict, right? So now which blockchain block should be added? Whether B will add the block of A, E and F, that is orange block, or whether A, E and F will add this purple block. Now the question arises, right? Now, according to our consensus protocol, which soever network will have the longest blockchain remember which soever network will have the longest blockchain that blockchain will be adopted and the blockchain that is having the short blockchain that blockchain block will be discarded and you will understand this with the help of an example so just don't worry in this case if you will see a e and f are part of a network right since they are close to each other and they have the same block so let's say that a e and f are the part of a network and B and C are a part of a different network. And we are assuming that uh, each of these systems that are present in our blockchain network have the same power to solve the mathematical problem, right? As we discussed in our mining video, right? That all these people solve a mathematical problem since they are miners. So we are assuming that each of these systems that, uh, that is present here, that are present here, are having the same, same power to solve the mathematical problem, okay? Now, since A, E and F are a network, and they are in majority so they will have a computational power of solving a mathematical problem of three right because one of this one of we are assuming that uh, this having a problem this has the capability of uh, you know solving the mathematical problem of one this is also having the mathematical solving the mathematical problem capability of one this is also having one this is also having one this is also having one so the whole network have the capability like a e and f have the capability to solve the mathematical problem of three right in the same way b and c will have 
the computational problem to solve that mathematical problem of two okay so definitely a e and f are more powerful in in this case right so what a e and f will do they will add another block to their blockchain so in this case we are assuming that e has added e has created a block and e has added this block to its blockchain now e will transfer this information to a and f and they will also add this block to their blockchain now in this case if you will see in this case if you will see which of these which of these network have the longest chain so you can clearly see that a e and f have the longest chain right they have one two three four five six blockchains means six blocks in the blockchain while b and c has have only five blocks in the blockchain right so as we discuss according to our consensus protocol we will only respect we will only consider the longest blockchain and we will discard the blocks of our small blockchain now in this case since aef has have the longest blockchain so b and c blocks will be discarded so the purple block that b and c has created will be discarded so the transaction that were present in bnc blocks right in the purple blocks they will be again transferred back to the mempool okay mempool is an area where all the transactions are kept so this these transactions that are like these blocks the transactions that are discarded for now these blocks that are discarded for now all the transactions of these discarded block will be again added back to the mempool so that again mining can be done on them so that again those transaction can be you know uh, can be processed in the block okay so these blocks that you are seeing on your screen these blocks are actually called orphan block these are called orphan block or you can say them as discarded block now once these block will be discarded bc will add the blocks these orange blocks that are being add that that are a part of this aenf network so b and c will add these blocks to their blockchain so that a consistency among all the people of these blockchain network of this blockchain network can be maintained and these blocks again as i said these blocks will be called as orphan block and these blocks will be discarded all the transaction that were present in these discarded block will be again added to the mempool so that again those transaction can be processed by the miners in the next uh, mining process okay and this is how our uh, blockchain network will look like so just remember always and always the longest chain will win always the longest chain will will and the shortest chain the block that the blockchain that is having the short chain right in that case the blocks will be discarded like as we have seen in this case okay if you are finding it a little bit complicated just rewind back this video you will understand it i guarantee you okay so this is how our network will look like a beautiful blockchain network now let us see some of the important points related to our consensus protocol so the consensus protocol of blockchain is much better alternative to our byzantine fault tolerance what is a byzantine fault tolerance as we discussed in our byzantine generous problem right in our byzantine general problem for that general problem a solution was proposed and that solution was this byzantine fault tolerance and for our byzantine fault tolerance the majority of votes that we require is of 66% okay while in case of our consensus protocol we only need majority of 51% so our consensus protocol is a much better alternative to our byzantine fault tolerance because fault tolerance requires a, a majority of 66% vote while our consensus protocol only requires 51% vote second all the transaction in the orphan block will be dropped as we have seen also these transaction will again go back to the mempool so that the miners can again solve for it and the miner that had mined the block right uh, if you will remember that c has created that purple block right so that purple block was discarded from the blockchain network so for that c will not be getting any type of reward because that block got discarded from the blockchain network by the consensus protocol so remember this point also and third point is for this type of situation if you might have heard this thing that for, uh, for whenever you do a bitcoin transaction you must wait for six block confirmation and the reason for this is this only that there can be conflicts in the blockchain network so you do not want to be the part of that conflict right let's say a has transferred you some bitcoin okay now you are thinking that a has done this transaction and now you will be receiving the bitcoin but after some time the block that was having that transaction got discarded from the blockchain network because that block was the orphan block 
right that block was not the part of the longest chain so it was discarded from the network in that case you will not be getting any like bitcoin from a right so you must wait for six block confirmation and then and then only you should be you know happy that okay now you have received the transaction but we will talk about like this six block confirmation more in our upcoming videos this is just to give you an you know overview of this that uh, why you should wait for six block confirmation whenever you are doing any bitcoin transaction so i hope you like this video if you have any confusion guys please comment that confusion below i will definitely solve that confusion i know this is the complicated topic so please comment below if you have liked this video please like the like button and if you haven't subscribed to, to this channel please subscribe to this channel because i am regularly going to upload new blockchain courses on this channel this is my instagram id where you can directly interact with me and we have our uh, blockchain developer discord link community link in the description you can join that there are 2000 plus blockchain members currently as the time of recording this video you can join that you can ask your doubts you can you know network with the blockchain developer community so meet you soon in the next video bye bye